Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and with me today is Arlen. Hello. Hello. Are we working Don? Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Oh, delay, delay, delay. My goodness. Over there manning the slow computer is Don. Hello. Hello. There he goes. <laughs> All right, so are you guys ready to make Christmas cards? It's so exciting. Now, Lynn, have you ever done this? No. No, no I've never done it. Did you think it was possible? No. Okay. You can. The designs have to be uh, not very dense because otherwise you'll just perforate the cardstock and it'll just pop out. If that's what you're going for, great. <laughs> but what we're going to do on these ones is we're going to applique fabric to give it a little more strength. On the cardboard? On the card, yeah. Oh, no way. Yeah. You'll see how it works. Okay. Yeah, you'll see how it works. First, though, I wanted to show you guys um, Don's mom stopped by today to give me my birthday present. My birthday is next week. And you ready for this? I got a bling chicken <laughs> for applique chicken. Isn't he cute? I'm like, wow. And he's pretty, isn't he? He's pretty. He's definitely blingy. So I got a bling chicken. And I so appreciate that sense of humor. So that's also going to go on my desk. We'll put them so you guys can see them. A bling chicken. Bling chicken. Bling chicken. Okay, so <laughs> moving on. <laughs> For supplies. Now, you can buy pre-made cards. Doesn't matter. Five by seven is the size that we're going to do. Or you can cut yours to size um and this is just cardstock that i got from michael's just cardstock and it happens to be <coughs> the perfect color for my fabric ah. and i'm going to use gold thread on it and then there is an applique so uh yeah and just fold it don cut it for me make a really good fold and uh, we're pretty much ready to go on it. So I'm going to say straight up that you have to use embroidery designs that are specifically made for cards. They are definitely different. Um, they're, they're definitely, I mean, you could take a card design and put it on something else, but you can't do it the other way. So do not try to put you know, a regular design on a card, it's not going to work. So the first thing we have to do, this is going to be the front of my card. And it, you know, doesn't matter which way you do it, but we want it to kind of fold this way because this is how we're going to put it on the hoop. So it stitches on the front. Now, the other thing you need is an extra piece. Now, I didn't cut this to size. I'll do that after but you're going to have stabilizer and all the knots and everything and we're just going to glue this over to cover it up so they're asking that you cut the paper to five by seven yeah you fold, did fold your card stock in half and then cut yeah. it to five by seven cut it to five by seven look here five by seven that's all you have to do. So this should be five by seven too, but I didn't do it. And you're going to put that in the hoop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I am. You're going to be so surprised, Lynn. Uh, yeah. So here's the five by seven hoop. Um, you should use tearaway. I can't get at my tearaway because it's on Ragnar and that's kind of tucked away yet because we're not finished moving stuff. So I'm going to use what I have. And what I have is cutaway. I would not use water soluble stabilizer. It's not enough. So a nice tear away or a cutaway. You're just gonna cut it away. So Okay. Yeah. I'm 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 sorry, I'm still lost with you putting the card stock in the hoop. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna sound different, just so everyone knows it's okay. gonna sound different. So get everything ready and let's go to McDreamy, Don. McDreamy's up. All right. Bobbin, bobbin, bobbin. I checked Bobbin. I, I actually haven't used McDreamy since. Yeah, he's still good. Okay. 
Bjorn is right here on the lookout. And the first step is our card placement. And I just have gold thread loaded and I'm just gonna use the gold thread. So this is where our card is gonna go. And it should fit handily inside. If you want it to go over, like do a bigger card, you can, but I found that it, it warped a little bit because it wasn't sitting flat. You, you're just using your regular 75 by 11 needle? I never changed my needle. So yes, regular 7511 needle. Okay, do his little dance back to the desk, Don. So this is where our card, if you notice, the card fits in perfectly there. Now you can use a little bit of glue. I'm gonna use, because I'm using the cutaway I'm going to use a little bit of glue spray. Don't overdo it. And don't use anything that your machine's going to go all geeky on and get stuck. So we're going to carefully place this, just like any other applique. That's all it is, just like any other applique. Wow. Give it a press. What? I'm still in awe. Uh, you'll love this. It's a, I mean, when you send a card like this to someone, they go... Wow, holy cow, you did that on your machine? And the answer is yes, yes, I did. Oh, wow. I need that again. I'm in wow now. <laughs> so your card should be on that side, the left side. So okay. it just makes it easier. So, okay, back to the machine, Don. Okay. Now, could you have used tape? You can use tape. You said McDreamy doesn't like tape. McDreamy doesn't like tape, okay. so I don't use it. A little okay. bit of spray. Uh, I don't use the spray very often, so I'm okay with that. So now we're going to do a normal applique. So we are going to stitch the applique placement. And it's going to stitch right through. Oh, wow. It's a little bit noisier, but that's it going through. So they're big stitches, so there's, you know, less penetration, so to speak. And that's just a placement. So same as always for this. See, now that looks beautiful already. Okay, so placement and then put your fabric down. I did put a little spray on it because I didn't iron. It's been a busy day. Candace is asking if you can use a glue stick. I am not sure. I personally would not because I think it would goop up my needle and I really like McDreamy. So I think afterwards you can use a glue stick, but I... I I'm not sure how great it would be for the machine. I tend to only use, on my machine, I tend to only use things that are designed for it. Whew, that was a little closer than I'd like. That was way closer than I'd like, my goodness. Oh, that's pretty... Uh, yep. I lost, but that's okay. We're going to be doing stitches over it. So, as with normal, it's going to stitch it out twice. Make sure your fabric's big enough, for goodness sake. <laughs> and if you're using directional fabric like this, you're going to want to make sure it's going the right way. Well, oh, that'd be funny if it was upside down. Uh, yeah, you could just turn the card over, but you'd have to catch it. And this is the front of the card that you're stitching. Front of the card, yes. All right, Don, back to the desk. Desk's up. Now, I got a little wobbly there, but I think it'll be okay. So, when you're trimming, it's kind of delicate. I would say it's more delicate than fabric or anything like that. So I'm going to be really gentle on the pulling because you do not, you do not want to pull anything out. Now, if you notice, Lynn, these are big stitches. Okay. Big stitches, less hole penetration. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, unless chance okay. you have. Because you can see that if you're not super careful, um, like when you're digitizing even, that you could put too many holes and your cardstock's just going to literally fall, fall apart. apart. Okay. So that's the reason for the big stitches. Now I'm pretty close here. I have to keep moving it up. But it's the same. Just, just consider it delicate, fragile. Handle with care. Oh, there we go. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can choose any old piece of fabric, any old cardstock. I picked a beautiful, you know, darker gray color, and it almost exactly matches it does. the yeah, fabric. It does. It's a good job. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm pretty close on this edge. I do want to trim it a bit because... We are going to do a gorgeous motif stitch on it here. So, yeah, a little too close. A little too close there. It's because I have the golden chicken. <laughs> the golden chicken. Well, I think that's good enough. <laughs> because I have the paper close enough. Nancy says to Lynn, I was skeptical too. But it works. I was skeptical, mm -hmm. so I was just watching today, but this is cool. Okay. Yeah, it's a technique. We're all about learning techniques. Lynn just asked if I'm going to cut the top. No, this piece here. Oh, did I? Oh. See, it's actually kind of hard to see, isn't it? Is. it? Thank you very much, eagle eyed Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> much appreciated. Look how pretty the gold metallic yes. thread looks on it. So, okay, do, you know, a little bit better. It would have been a whole lot easier if I had had a bigger piece of fabric. Right. But okay. Anyway, so we'll take a peek at the back. Just looks like anything else, yeah. but you can see the big, long stitches. Okay. So, okay, back to the machine. Dreamy's up. And believe it or not, we're going to do two appliques on this. So... Now we're going to do some nice decorative stitches. So it's kind of okay that the fabric showed a little bit. Okay. It just sounds, remember it sounds well, different. Well, yeah, because you're poking through almost like cardboard. Yeah, cardstock. If you were using just regular paper, I don't think you'd have the greatest results. No. You need something... There's different weights to the paper. You don't want it too thick, but you don't want it too thin either. So beautiful stitches. The gold works beautifully. I could have used um, silver. Would look yep. really yep. good. I I'm going to be all bold, and I'm going to use red fabric for the second applique. The first card that I did, I didn't um, put fabric down for the second applique because I wanted the trees to show through. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it looked pretty good other than I, I just took the 8.5 by 11 card and I folded it in half and put it on here so it wasn't necessarily straight but it kind of warped because the card was over the hoop a little bit. Okay. Now, can I ask you a question? You always can. If you don't have tape or your little spray glue, um, could you just put the cardstock and hope that it stitches? You could. You could. I'd be afraid it would move, but um, you might get lucky and it wouldn't. Okay. Most people go to the dollar store and they get painter's tape. Okay. Painter's tape is the best. Oh heck, you could use scotch tape too. Oh, you yeah. could use scotch Everybody tape. Everybody always has scotch tape. Yeah, and for the card too, you could put it, you know, on the sides, um, just over a little bit, and you won't even interfere with that. Okay. So yeah, there's there's options. Again, I hesitate on the glue because I just it's too sticky. Well, it might glob up your needle. Yeah. And if it's if you put too much, it might get stuck like in the eye of the needle, and yeah. I'd be afraid that you know it would contaminate everything. So 
I just generally stick to something that works. Painter's tape is probably my favorite. I really like, I just stitch right through it. Okay. You've seen me do yep, that a I couple have. of times. Yep. Because it just tears right off. It's yep. not sticky. It's not anything. So I forgot to show off my nails. I have Christmas nails. And uh, they kind of match. Yes, they do. The they part. match the trees. Oh, and I'm doing red too. All right. I rock. You rock? That's what I spent my Sunday doing. Wow. You couldn't have done that better. I, I, I. She's I know. Done that a couple times. I didn't oh. plan it. I just wanted some bling, and then I used a dotting tool to make the poly. It's supposed to be. It, it kind of splatted and grew a little bit more than I thought it would. But you know what it is? Lynn said, "I love your Christmas nails." I'm like, success. Doesn't have to be perfect, right? Does I not. Awesome, yeah. That, it does happen sometimes. So, that's stitching nicely. It looks it amazing. And even just like that is beautiful. It is. It is. It, and you just take it out of the hoop and you're going to trim down the backing and glue on. You can use any kind of glue that you want for that because it's not on the machine. And glue on the back and... Um, write it out, use a stamp, anything. But this one, because it's a need a good design, we're gonna do so much more with it. So much more. So beautiful matching thread that looks great with the design. Look at, oh, I couldn't have placed that. I could have no. placed that a little bit better. No way. So we're gonna do our second applique. Seriously, seriously. Second applique. And it's a circle. I love yesterday's face. The festive faces. Yep, I learned so much yesterday from Did it. You? I learned lots. Awesome. Yep. It's a really cute design. I I found it enjoyable. So that's the placement. We know how this goes, right? And this is put down our fabric. I thought it'd be really bold. And you can change colors for any of this. I'm gonna stick with the gold because I find it completely enjoyable. But you can change colors and change it around. It's just perfectly fine. No chicken here. This is what applique is supposed to be. <laughs> just saying, this is what applique is supposed to be. No chicken. Nice big stitches. So with the fabric behind this, it gives it a little more stability. Do his little dance. We're waiting. All right. Back to the desk, Don. And someone's asking which one this is you're doing. Um, the wrong one. <laughs> oh. Yes. Wow. Sorry. It is actually the wrong one. I'm doing the one with the candy cane. I don't know why I'm not doing the one in the picture, but I'm not. So they're all basically done the same. We're going to do a couple of them anyways. But yeah, my apologies. That uh, that didn't work out. That's Look okay. at the red and the gold. Wow. Oh. Now this has a little bit of bubbles in it. So maybe spraying to hold it a little bit flatter might have been better but that's okay there's a lot of stitching going on in the center of it so I'm not going to worry too much but look at the gold and the red ooh, that so ooh. goes so well ooh yes I like it and the red goes spectacularly with the background I can't see what you're doing oh there we go Okay, maybe you should have said that before I was almost done the circle. Oh, we were we could see it before, just when you got the bug, we couldn't see anything. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, I did a much better job of trimming on this one. So, like I said, even this now, can is you, cool. Can you turn it over for mm -hmm. a second? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. I thought there'd be, like, so many more holes. Uh, nope, it's specifically digitized for that. Wow. Yep. 
to make it work. So, new technique. Wow. Can we go back to McDreamy? McDreamy's up. All right. And this is the last color change. I contemplated silver and white for it, but I'm going to stick with the gold. And it's the one with the candy game. Again, I, I don't know what I was thinking, why I didn't do the one I was supposed to, but I didn't. Yeah, just stick with the program. So, satin stitches, but they're really light satin stitches. They are not the happy stat satin stitches that you like. Okay. Um, you can kind of see the spaces between if you look really carefully. Oh, Don zoomed in so they can see oh, okay. better. But see, and that's the density. Okay. So it looks like a satin stitch, but there isn't... Oh, that's much better, Don. There isn't a gazillion holes in it. And see, nice connections. Stunning. Wow. So then you and Mickey can do these. Sure. Yep, you can. Mm -hmm. You can applique, my girl. <laughs> you can applique and you can, you're a pro at trimming oh, applique. I'm a pro at trimming. But what a wonderful concept that you can yes. give embroidered cards. And like I said, the reaction from people, they're like, wow. Yeah. So it can be done. We're almost done. So, wow. yeah. There's no stopping you once you learn how. And as long as you have the proper design digitized specifically for it, then it's going to work. Yeah, you can see the spaces here. See, now this little part here is a little more dense, but not too dense. Okay. There's no... I shouldn't say anything else. I was going to say there's there's nothing that can go wrong, but, you know, because we're live, it will go wrong, so I'm going to be careful. I love candy canes. Did you know that about me? No. I love candy canes. I've always loved candy canes. I like how they look. I like them on the tree, except we can't do that because we have a tree walker coon hound. I like eating them. I love hot chocolate with them. What, done? How long do these cards usually take? Um, 21 minutes. That's what McDreamy says. There's 12,000 stitches. So, low stitch count. So you could really do it quickly. Yes. Especially if you, you know, pre-cut this. You could just measure it. Half an hour. It, yeah. Start to finish. Yep. Could you use felt? Yeah. Ooh. You could use anything you want. Instead of applique? Instead of applique fabric? Yeah, you could use felt instead of just cotton fabric. Really? Yep. Sure you could. You could also throw a little bit of organza on top of this. So it would be when you're doing, when you're placing your fabric down, you put the fabric and the organza. And usually with organza, it's a bit slippy. So you tape it down and it would stitch the tack down stitches. And then you trim both at the same time and it would give her a shimmery look. You can glue bling on it afterwards. Hot fix in here. Anything. You can change the writing or just leave it without the writing. Whatever you prefer. Oh, really? Yeah, sky's the limit. So one thing I'll say about these card designs, I'm gonna suggest you do not make them any bigger and you do not make them any smaller because Why? you don't want to change the density. Why not bigger? Uh, because then it would be too loose. Two of these would be spread out. So okay. stitch files is what McDreamy and Mickey understand. Okay. Working files is what I do to create these files. And these guys don't understand it. You have to convert it into a stitch file. So a working file I can make if I'm creating it myself. Okay. I can make changes. I can move stuff. I can change like the density and everything. If you have a stitch file, 
you can't do that. All of the editing capabilities, or the majority of them, are taken away. Is that why sometimes I hear you saying that you, uh, you cut instead of a jump stitch, you cut it and then move over? Yeah. Okay. That is. So, you can resize this, but the stitch count is going to stay the same. Right. So if you're taking a design with 10,000 stitches and it's five by seven, and you put it into a four by four. It's gonna look all jumbled. Yep. Gotcha. And too many penetrations. And you have to be careful. Look at how that gold looks on the red. Oh, I love Stunning. King Star. I love King Star. And we are gonna do writing on this as well. And it's satin stitches, but the density is a lot lower. Okay. So they're not gonna be as sharp and, you know, the thread, the way it lines up like that. But I mean, I think that looks amazing. So this is why I picked this one, because it has a candy cane oh, on candy it. Cane. Just, I just looked and went, oh, candy cane. Send it to McDreamy. So seriously, isn't this awesome? That's, that's so amazing. On a card. On a piece of card stock. So you can make a million dollar Christmas card for mm, scraps of fabric, some thread, and card stock that you can buy like a hundred of them for five dollars. So, and your time. Now, can you use construction paper? Or is it too thin? I think it's too thin. Okay. It's cheaper paper and you can tear it a lot easier. Okay. So I wouldn't, um, cardstock is the best thing. Now you can get different weights of it, but just the average, like what you'd find at Michael's. Okay. That's what you want to get. And you can use any color combination like this one. Nobody says Christmas cards can't be a dark gray no. with gold. You could use um, cardstock with a design on it. Mm -hmm. Just make sure, you know, everything works on it. You don't wanna. Okay. You could use um, variegated thread on here. You can use any thread. Ooh. You could use variegated. Maybe next week we'll do one with variegated thread. I'll the, the the white the white fabric would look good in the center yep. of the candy cane and use a red and white variegated thread Yep, for the candy cane. Sure would. So now, isn't that awesome? Well, now that candy canes are so many different colors, it doesn't matter what color the candy cane is. I like, the, uh, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, mine's like gold and red, so whoop de do. Basically, you know what? If you like something, Lynn, if you want to do a hot pink Christmas <laughs> card, girl, you can do a hot pink <laughs> Christmas card. Um, anything goes. Nope. What does weight of card stock? Just a lighter weight card stock. I'm pretty sure it's like 80. I'll go look, it's over there. So something like this as the first background with red, how cute would that be? Aww. How cute would that be? Wow. And maybe a white card or even a matching card and different colored thread. Or how about a green one? Ooh. Green yep. card, this fabric, and red is there the center go. applique. Yep. Anyways, just ideas. I will um I will look for if the card stock or maybe you want to. We still have a few minutes. It's over. You'll see the gray one. It's probably half pulled out. And it should say it on it. It is just Where is it? over there Where? in my cupboards there. Okay. So probably like under the printer or over one. I'm pretty sure it's 80. Now those are pretty good satin stitches those there. Those are nice. So they're just longer. And then the other ones, but there's still a lot of breathing room there. What's that? I can't. I can't hear him. See, you wouldn't know it's not flat now or puffy. So yeah. Same, right? Yeah. Sixty-five pounds. 
65 pound is what I'm using. Yeah. And you can buy some really nice packs at, um, well, Michael's. We don't have a whole lot around here. But it had the one that I got for this one. It had black to white and all the shades of gray in it. And I thought, wow. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? Wow. 171 people. Yeah. So, I know it was shocking. <laughs> Green has said 80 gram is regular. Oh, it's the other way around. Right. Woo! We got it. We got it. 65, 65, 65, not 80, 65. Yeah, so I probably had to put some printer paper in, so that kind of stuck in my brain. That's okay. But how's that? A little bit of warping here, but that's okay. You can flatten it. It's paper, so you yeah. can flatten it out. I wouldn't go so far as to iron it, but you know what? I don't think it matters any at all. Just there's maybe a lot of stitches. Flatten it. How would you flatten it? You could sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> then you'd have a butt shape on it. Put a book on it. Yeah, that's what I would do. And just make a whole bunch of them and put the books over it. Something heavy. I think that's all it would take. So now we're going to do some lettering and it says believe in the magic of Christmas. So I was going to skip the um, stitching for the lettering, but I want you guys to see that it is possible mm -hmm. to put lettering on it. Again, a lot less density that B didn't take any time to no. do. Seconds. Now, when this finished the circle and went over here, I could have stopped the machine and put maybe red thread in. It doesn't have to be. You just have to stop it at the right time. Okay. Um, but other than the B, we should be clear. Because if it's stitching over like one of the gold trees, it's not gonna be yeah. as clear. Um, but yeah, some nice smooth writing over there. I don't, the, the warping, I think that's easily fixed. I just keep seeing it. Just my eye. And maybe it's one of those things that nobody would notice. Probably. Oh, it went back to dot the eye. <laughs> but easily fixed, so. So believe. So lots of ideas. I mean, lots of little bits of Christmas fabric it, you could use. Plain colors, you could use uh, different cardstock. Yep. I have a lot of um, scrapbooking cardstock. Okay. And it's uh, beautiful designs on it. Just bear in mind they're usually only one side, so. But that's okay. So, what do you think of cards? I would have never in a million years thought you could do this. Through cardstock. Through cardstock. I was impressed the first time I saw it too. Yep. Wow. And it's quite nice. Can you imagine a birthday card? Oh. A birthday card embroidered? Yeah. Or even welcoming a child, you know? Yep. With a baby rattle or, you know, it's yep. a girl, it's a boy. Wow. Lots of Easter cards. Yeah. Endless, and endless ideas. Yeah. And easy to do really easy to do. Look at Don has it really zoomed in. That looks great. Is doing the in for ah, yeah! Yay! She's cheering. Both her arms went up in the air. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Maybe there's nothing, like I said, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, this one looks a little more traditional. Kind of. Ooh, a hot pink candy cane. Yeah. Yep, you can do that. You've got barn fabric you could use. Do you have oh, cardstock at home? No. Ah, I'll give you some. <laughs> I have neon cardstock, so yeah. What if you wanted to use different lettering on here? Well, you'd have to I, be really... They're asking basically how you decide what you would use, but... I don't think there's any lettering that's standard for no, doing it on the card. No, there is not. You have to modify it. 
yeah, and you'd have to know what you're doing to change. Like, there's no magic numbers. The problem is, if you take off too much of the density on this, it's going to be too hard to read. Right. Uh, if you put too much, you are going to make a mess of your card. So, yeah. Look at the googly eyes googlying. What are you reading? Lynn's reading. I miss everything. It's too far away from me. I'm reading Karina's. Oh. What is, is there, There's no underlay. Uh, it... No. No underlay in that density, so I just have to play with it. But you're going to have to play with it. Doing. Yep. She said she's done embroidery on toilet paper. Yeah, don't get me started on that. Yeah, people do. Ugh. <sighs> Yeah. It's a big Christmas thing. You'll see it. Yeah. You'll see it. I told... I was saying to someone, you have to hoop. You have to hoop everything if you can. And they're like, uh, you can't hoop the toilet paper. I said, oh, yes, you can. And I hooped it and I stitched out just running stitch letters that said no. Because <laughs> I don't want to. Just no. <laughs> no. No, just no. So, nice and readable. Yes. Sparkle. I wanted to show everybody that you can use the King Star thread even in something as delicate as cardstock and fabric. You can't do that with most other. Boom. So that, that's okay. That is our embroidered card. I just think that's cute. So we have a couple of wobblies, but you know what? I don't think it's a problem. So we're gonna pop it out of the hoop. Oh wow. Yeah. Oops, I hit the camera, but the other camera. <laughs> um pop it out of the hoop. I think that's stunning. And we're going to flip over to the back. Now, tearaway is what you should be using. Like I said, I don't have any. And when you are tearing away, so it rips kind of like paper. This doesn't because it's cut away. You need to hold this down as you're ripping. You can't just go and rip it off. You have to hold it down because it's paper. It's only going to you know, rip everything. So make sure you're extra careful. But because I have cut away to get rid of all this excess, guess what I have to do? Cut it away. So I'm not being too careful because we are going to be covering this up. I mean, you could leave it like this, but mm, I think we can come up with a much more professional finish to it. So I'm just cutting it out and uh, I mean you don't want to cut your stitches but you don't have to make it perfect either just kind of has to be inside the fold lines to it so like I said tear away just remember and I wouldn't tear away inside some people get a little fanatical with their tear away leave it for support um, it's a card no one's gonna wash it so uh, just do the outside so you don't have stabilizer hanging around. And uh, do make sure you don't cut your card. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't cut your card. So now we're going to fold it and we're going to have a look. Now this does need to be flattened out a bit. The next thing you have to do, and this will actually help flatten it out, you need a piece of cardstock. Now it can be matching, it could be contrasting, it could be whatever you want. This size, a, a little bit smaller. Now I don't have one cut properly. And what you're gonna do is glue it. So you can't see the back. So, okay, so you're gonna put the glue on the cardstock and glue it against yeah. the back So of it's like everything. this. Yeah, and then you can straighten it out and flatten it out and uh, pre-cut it so it just kind of fits on. Like if I cut it now, it'll be all crooked. But you glue that on and then you have the inside of your card 
to do whatever you want on. Oh, wow. Yeah. So we'll just pretend this works and any kind of glue because it has nothing to do with your embroidery machine and flatten everything down. If you use the right kind of glue, you could make it stick straight and uh, then you have an embroidered card. I like it just the way it is. Yeah, well, you, you can do whatever you want, but I I think I would prefer not to have this showing. Although, you know what? It's still okay, isn't it? It, it is. It's still okay. So whatever you prefer on that, I think the gluing is going to help with my wobbles. I mean, it's not all that wobbly, but... And you notice too, Lynn, on the back, there's no rips or tears no, not. or anything like that. Wow. Yeah. I think it looks better if it's covered up and then you can do a big Merry Christmas like across it or something right. like that. But so embroider your own cards. It's that easy. That, that was easy. Beautiful. Yeah, that was easy. It's quick too because it's only 20 to 5. Oh, well, oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. So we'll do another one of these. So you guys get it down, Pat. We'll do it next week. And um, Saturday is going to be another face. You guys can let me know what um, sweet pea face that you want. And uh, make sure you post your cards. I'd love to see different ones. I'm going to glue this and straighten it out so it looks way better and cut this paper to size. And I'll take a nice picture so you guys can see it. I think this would be gorgeous fabric. Oh, wow. It would be. It's cute already it with so the adorable. red. I know. I might have to do something. Maybe next week I'll use this. Okay. So. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys will embroider your Christmas cards and have them turn out beautifully like this. And uh, thanks for joining us, Lynn. Thanks Thank you. for believing that you can embroider on uh, a card. Yes. <laughs> She's still kind of shocked about it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bling chicken. Bling, 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 bling chicken.